with respect to the real difference between suicide and MAID, the government has determined in Carter that sometimes a request for MAID or a desire to end one's life due to unbearable suffering can be rational. And that's the concept of rational suicide that people may have heard of before. So the key difference is, is this person making a rational and capable decision? And that involves having a realistic appraisal of their medical situation and their options. Um, the other thing is that the MAID process itself requires a certain degree of stability because someone is going through multiple assessors over multiple visits. They are making a request and going through the medical system and not doing this on their own or in a secretive manner. Um, so there are many different dimensions to that. There are additional supports through the process of going through the MAID assessment, which may lead to some alternative options. And there's also a consistent request over time and the ability to get through that process. So that itself also creates some distinctions between MAID and suicide. What I will say also is that some people requesting MAID can be suicidal. And part of our job as assessors, as in any other medical context, would be to assess suicide risk. And if someone is at risk of suicide in the conventional sense, or if we're not sure, then that person would need to be protected. And sometimes that means involuntary hospitalization if there is a risk, um, too high a risk that we assess to be the case. So I've had to do that before. There are times where someone is suicidal when they're requesting MAID. Most of the time not, but sometimes. <laughs> 